Mystery of the Hammocks in Ali Valley. In this video, we'll continue to talk about Ali Valley of Northern Pamir in Kyrgyzstan. And we'll consider the deposits themselves we talked about in a previous video. What are they made of, lithology, where they come from potentially. And we'll see the difference between different deposits there and talk about their origin. Very important to understand where they come from, why and how, as a one big event, catastrophic, or as the gradual accumulation of the deposit due to the activity of glaciers or the rivers, and will give us an idea about processes in the valley to understand how it's react to the climate change, to the seismology, and if there are potential hazards for people. We'll look in the Ali Valley Stradiway where the main deposits are located. Zala Range, because also river flowing on the northern Alora part of it, and this is Ali Range. Here you have glaciers which bring its sediments and the waters down the valley into the Kazosu and down towards Amudaria eventually. So the main deposits we're going to look at is the large hummocky moraines, potentially moraines, that were formed, they were preserved in this valley. So we just start moving from the east to the west of the valley and these deposits which are unmentioned before, accumulated by different glaciers here. And we're now going to talk about this as a bigger one in the catchment of Kirzhnevetskova glacier. And this is the smaller uh, lobes here. One, two, you can see. And Tuyuk uh, deposits here as well. And this is the main Achiktaš deposit, named by the river stream coming from the Lenin glacier catchment. And that's what mostly we'll talk about. And the second one, it's in the common glacier deposit, which is located here. You can see it's straight forward, lying down in the valley. Most of it, of course, been washed away by the rivers, but we still have some remnants here, even coming close to the village and to the main road highway going through. This is the place where people live. It's the river cutting through and that's the remnants of this deposit. Here, 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 all these little hillocks, all the way here, all the way up, till here, fold the cutting through and we have some bigger hills and a smaller. So let's consider that. The hummocky deposits cover a big area and here they're called Chukure in a local language, which is the Turkish group of the languages mostly used in Kyrgyzstan. In Chikur, it's mean the series of hills, 5 to 30 meters high, with depressions between the hills and often occupied by small lakes. And this Chikuri field spread, we can see all over the valley, which situated between 2.8 southern meters till 3.8 southern meters sea level. In the Ali Valley overall, we can say that Chukur is spread for more than 800 square kilometers. It's quite significant landform for that settings. And the main sources, as I say, Achiktash, Tuyuk, Kazaldaria, Kichkisu, Kurumdi, and all these deposits can go as far as 20 kilometers down towards the river. And if we look briefly, we can tell that these deposits common and Kungur Glacier one, it's actually significantly lower down the valley than any other ones. It could be the question of preservation, or it also could be the nature of this deposit. The Chikuri farther down the valley are located quite lower because the valley lower down towards the Tajikistan. We have some suggestions about their region. And one of the first studies in descriptions was done by Kornievetsky himself in 1930s. And he suggested that all Chikuri in the valley were marking the four stages of deglaciation. So the glaciers were in the valley and then the moment they were retreating, this Chikuri was formed from a retreating of the glacier very fast and the dead ice stay under the hills and the hummocks formed as a result of melting down of covered by the debris ice. You can learn about this more in my previous one of the first videos about glaciers and debris cover on them. 
More recently, uh, there's a study done by Shatradin in 2000, there's a published work suggested that the last maximum glacial extent was about 37 years ago, and there was a small red advance 8,000 years ago in the valley. And he suggested that the maximum extent, the common Pelle glacier, was the biggest in the valley, which doesn't make sense much because the common catchment is smaller, significantly smaller than Krzhnevetskova or, for example, of Lenin Glacier. Kurdikov, in 1950-1964, looked in morphology between common hillox and Achiktash hillox in Lenin Glacier catchment, and he suggested that the common is of rock avalanche region. So rather than the glacier was melting down and leaving these hills, there's a big event that happened in the several minutes or even seconds, and they deposited a big rock avalanche. You see my previous videos about rock avalanches and the glacier deposits and the difference, how we can differentiate it. I talk about this a little bit more in detail. But rock avalanche is like a big landslide, which are categorized by bigger size and more catastrophic movement. So it's so large and it's crushed so fast and falling down from such a big slope height so it's crushed the material into the powder and as a result the material start behaving as a fluid and as a result cover longer areas since like a liquid flowing down the valley crushing demolishing everything on the way and often creating the hillox we know the landslide from the volcanic eruptions for example taranaki which caused the formation of small hillox very much looking like the common deposit. Other studies like Zabirov, Nikonov in 83, Arathmin and Stecker in 1999, Stecker in 2003, suggested relative chronology of quaternary terraces and moraine deposits, and they distinguish five terrace levels. However, we can tell that uh, only recent studies, Strom in 2014 and by my group as well from 2012, suggesting that common is actually rock ranch deposit. However, there's a number of questions that we have about how big the landslide, where it's come from, where it's happened, so we need a date, and also how we can differentiate it from glacier deposit in the valley. And we also talk about the Achiktash, the Lenin catchment, and here we'll find that there's a rock avalanche deposit as well, however it's more complicated, you can tell that there's a rock avalanche deposit sitting on top of the glacial deposit, Achiktash deposit, the actual Lenin glacier deposit, and a little bit even flowed over towards the Tuyuk river catchment. So let's talk in detail how we can differentiate it in the field. So looking at just the morphology here, you can say it looks like deposit on top of it, or maybe there was a glacier surge on top of it. How can we differentiate it? Was it rock avalanche or not? And also how the glacier deposit underneath was formed. And in this video, I'll talk about some methods we used and what will tell you about the region of this deposit and give you some indication of events, what's happened first, what next, how, was it catastrophic or gradual, and what actual the sediment, lithology and morphology can tell us about this. Before we move on to the methods, let's just understand why we need to understand the formation, why it's important. So it's come from the glacier, it's come from rock avalanche, it's come all from one slope. Why we need to understand this difference? Well, first of all, because scientists go into this valley, they date those deposits and they're suggesting that the ice was there last time and they straight away interpolate the ice level, the snow line level in the valley and as a result, the ablation accumulation proportions of the glacier, and from that, they infer the temperatures, precipitation in the valley. Therefore, they infer what's happening with the climate. But if we have oddly behaving glacier, for example, if it's surging glacier or constantly landsliding on top of the glacier deposit, we can form, uh, we can cover the glacier and form the deposits which are not will be there if it's just due to the climate. And you come there and you date it and you infirm it's come from the climate, it will give you the wrong data for the climate forces. When you would think there was a cooling event in the valley, for example, because you find these huge hummocky deposits there and you dated them, it could be that there was a big landslide or big earthquake which could cause landslide or the glacier surge and form this deposit. So acclimatically behaving glaciers, uh, the remnants in form of deposits, can confuse your 
climate data. And we know that Lenin Glacier, I talked about this last video, searched during the 20th century along with several other uh, glaciers in this catchment. And in Hol Pamir we have a lot of surging glaciers. And this introduced the possibility of complex glacier dynamics acting out of equilibrium with climate. And it's confusing our glacial record in terms of its applicability in paleoclimate reconstructions. So how to understand the origin, the genesis of the deposit, where it's come from? We can look at its sediments, actual rocks within, lithology, the types of rocks, and we can look on the geomorphology. And often could be confused because we have also the rivers that can cut through the previous deposited material, create space for the new material to fall down on top of it, and the final deposit will be very complicated. So we need to understand relations to the geomorphic settings, and it will allow us to distinguish the moraines. We mostly investigate the deposits in the field, looking in the river cuts and some slopes, and we collected them for angularity. So we looked on the, how angular the rocks, lithology, identified its lithology. We counted the index of 50 class for each sample, which tell us of how elongated or spherical or out of shape rock is. This all was used to understand if the rocks were brought by the glaciers and they were through the grinding with time changed or they were brought for some catastrophic event which didn't have time to abrade or round it or have more elongated form. And lithology also very important. So if you go in any catchment and you just using the basic knowledge understand. In this catchment, for example, for the Lenin Glacier, I have number of lithology, these type of rocks, these type of rocks, for example, um, we have silts, argillites, we have some volcanic rocks. So everything that the river will, will bring through and the glacier, so why the glacier is sitting here, it will have the rocks all that source from this area. So I will not have rocks in the sediment of the glacier which source from these slopes or from different catchment, only from here, but they will be mixed very well. So my outcrop will look like mixture, nice mixture of different lithology, maybe some dominated because the bigger outcrop in the source, but there will be good mixture of these rocks and they will have some kind of rounding because they will fall down on the glacier, drag by the glacier, fluvial water, so the river streams on top and underneath, a little bit reworked it and then it's been deposited. If I will have the catastrophic rock lunge, for example, like we're suggesting for this common, I will have the rocks coming from in particular one piece of slope. It doesn't have to be big. So I might have two or three lithologies there, but uh, here, most of all, it will be, for example, one lithology. And it will tell me that all the rocks in this deposit will have same lithology. Or even if there's a two lithologies, I will see the distinct quid band, uh, how they spread and how they moved. Often in rock avalanche, we even see it as a straight line differentiated. This is limestones, for example, and this is sealstone, something else. Therefore, it's so straightforward just in the looking at lithology will tell us that. Another thing that why the rocks moving through the glacier catchments, they might experience some sorting. So the finer rocks will move further, faster, the bigger rocks will stay more down and longer move through the catchment and so on. So you have some kind of sorting because there's a water, there's ice moving and so on. If you have landslide collapsing, and the piece of the rocks were moving down the valley, they were crushed within, but they not have, a, have transportation one grain relatively to the other. Only after, after it's all deposited, then the rivers and the rain will wash it out, blah, blah, blah. But while it's moving down and in a solid uh, hill, one solid hill, you will have an old preserve as it was sitting down up in the slope and just crushed on the way and moved. So that's a very good indication that how rounded your rocks, how sharp they are, how they sorted, sorting, and how the shape has changed. So the geologists, the glaciologists looking for this for many, many, many years, and they differentiate that. They even can differentiate the rocks brought by the river, by sorting roundness, and by the shapes of them, and also by the glacier. 
some scientists even can differentiate if it's quite big glacier and quite uh, have a significant different transportation roads if this material come more from the super glacier material so the travel just on top didn't have so much sorting and rounding within the ice or under the ice you'll have more sorting and rounding and so on so we'll look on those things what else we can look at and of course we will look for this presence of the very fine particles glacier catchment we have a lot of seals very fine seals creating by the um, crushing material and then moving through the glacier and people say that in the bottom of the glacier you have a lot of abrasion happen when the rocks crash through the, um, over the rocks or over the bedrock and it's creating this flower we call it flower silts silts the one that's responsible for the blue color of the lakes that's related to the glaciers but however the silts not as fine not as nano size particles sometimes it could be produced but not as much in the quantities when we have catastrophic crushing during the rock avalanche collapse and we found that there will be much bigger proportion of those very very fine particles and they're so small they nano size and they are present throughout all of the deposit unless you're going to wash it through the river or something uh, in that particular place but otherwise if you have a chunk of good material that's sitting there for thousands of years you'll find those powder particles they kind of stick together they are agglomerated together and will, you need to wash it severely uh, you need to wash out all the deposits to wash them away for example the rainfall not going to do the job maybe on the subsurface level a couple centimeters or so or on the slope but not within actual deposit so that's another indication we can look at. It's this presence of the fine particles in rock avalanche deposit relatively to the glacial deposit. And of course, you will go into the field and you will see which uh, terraces formed first, then the glacier was on top, and then maybe reworking of this glacier material, like here, this material was reworked, and then new deposit was <laughs> brought on top of it. For example, here there was a obviously glacier material deposit all over, and then the river cut through this stream, you see, now it's dry. And it's created this depression in this older material. And then we have this uh, flowing down the rock avalanche, or glacier for example, and what it did, it went into the lower part. So it's obviously flow through here. You can see there's no more river, but there used to be. And the river find a new way around, or through here cut through you see through and so we're going there in the field and we're trying to see which terraces younger older which on top of what and you can see it nicely if you look on the outcrops through the river here for example and you can uh, map it all over see the elevations and compare it and build up the history of what happened in the valley and of course we know that in the beginning the river was floating from here what was the terminal of the ice then the ice retreated and the rivers are cutting through. The modern water coming from the modern presence of the glacier here. So this old dead ice uh, melting down. And the modern tank of the glacier is here. So the water is flowing from now from this. So it's incised, so cutting through deeper. For example, this is all the terrace. Then this was another terrace. You see there's some streams preserved. And this is more modern one. And we're going to study those outcrops to understand what was first, what's happened, how these little hum humps formed. You can see there's another stream cutting through, already through this terrace in building new material. And by the way, this is the base for the alpinists who are going up into the Lenin Peak. And these uh, little lakes as well preserved here and they usually formed when there's a chunk of ice was under the sediment, no more connected to the glacier, it's just melting down and creating these lakes, meltdown lakes, like a kettle holes. You can see here we have a lot of similar. And if we just look here, we can see this absolutely frequent hammock on top of the bigger hammock. And it's again like a lob flow through here. And even on this map, you can see how it's flow through here over the bigger hills. You see this hill? And then you see these hammocks. So they flow over. So we can tell even from this picture that this material older than that one. And it's formed differently than that one. 
and that will know oh, I see like it's flowing down through here and fill up this little river catchment and this is the more recent stream cut through and that's how it was washed out through the time so this sorts of reconstruction you can do using satellite images be in the field compare it looking through the outcrops and reconstruct what happened so let's talk about geomorphology. So both these deposits are characterized by extensive hammock deposits and they have uniform nature, we suggested. But through the close examination and field verification, as I explained, we see them two main types of deposits. We have elongated large-scale hammocks with concave profile and they are of glacial origin. And our outcrops show us that there is a glacial material all the lithology that you find in the catchment of all glaciers and roundness and absence on finds suggesting others. And you have very frequent, much smaller conical hammocks of convex shapes. So they're very conical. That's very identical, exactly like I told you they look like on Taranaki, for example. Lens love it. And they form during rock avalanche emplacement. So let's first consider the common glacier rock avalanche deposit. We have a big deposit in the valley floor. And the older glacier deposits are found only in the southwest where the common channel crosses through main Pamir Trust Fault. So it's extending for 15 kilometers from the modern common glacier terminus and 10 kilometers from the Kungur Glacier. Unfortunately, the image is not very good for the Kungur Glacier. Kungur is this lobe sitting in the cirque, and this is the common glacier. And it's sourced from the Rinsky Peak and it's a Justin Valley to the Lenin Peak and Lenin Glacier. So it's about 15 kilometers we have these deposits, two big lobes. This is everything that left in this valley, apart from these little deposits coming from this catchment. When we reconstruct, we understand that this is all part of one. So we have only these two left. So everything else was demolished if there was something built by these glaciers. You can see the difference, how they long and big and these frequent hillocks. And I can tell you it's much more straightforward in the field when you're there, standing there. And we have the main body. The main body is going, as I told you, you can trace it sometimes within this little catchment, especially here, and it goes down to some remnants here, all the way, all the way down. And apart like any other deposits in the valley, it goes all the way till this river, because also and it's actually cutting through, it's very thin there but it's here and it's almost reached the opposite slope. So this is the slope started from Ale range. And this is actually the village here. You can see this deposit spread as far as here. Some older images can show you a little bit better contrast. You can play with this in the Google Earth yourself. So just for you, I will measure the length in kilometers of this. So approximately if it's come from here and we can see it's continuous still there. This is 8.2 kilometers. This is big rock avalanche. Similar from here, up just to the base of the Zala range, it's 14 kilometers. And we can tell there's another, uh, if it's come somewhere from the slope, there's another 18 kilometers just from the slope till this area. So it's quite a big run out for this rock avalanche. So there's all the deposits area is about 4.5 square kilometers, large hammocks up to 30 meters high, and topped with the boulders of different lithology. Today we can measure about 2 kilometers narrow northward due to the action of the shifting Commons River, which washed it away. The general morphology of these deposits resembles both older and more recent large hammock deposits in the Ale Valley, formed by glacial deposition. So they're about 100 to 100 meters in diameter. 40 meters up in height, uniform morphology of the common landslide is dramatically different. And it's actually overrun these glacial hills in the western part, so we can see that. Therefore, the older glacier deposits on the open valley floor have been reworked to the flat, open outwash plain before the common rock avalanche occurred. So we can say that the common rock avalanche together about 34 kilometers from the source wall with about 80 kilometers width and it covers about 64 square kilometers of valley floor. And it reaches the other range of the Tanshine 
and even rising a little bit over it. And it's indicated on the rapid movement of these deposits, an abrupt stop. And it's very characteristic for catastrophic rock avalanche. At this central part of these deposits, there's a lot of artificial channels, uh, which were planned to irrigate the valley floor before the collapse of USSR. So people start digging there uh, back in the day and they stopped this project. We can see in the distal end of this landslide deposit that the Kuzilsu meanders through this deposit, which is very unusual if we follow this river throughout everywhere through the catchment. It flows quite straightforward, cutting through these outwashes, creating beautiful terraces. And then when it meets the common, it start meanders the way around. That's a good indication about this landslide deposit. See how old the meanders here? Now she shifted and shifted now in a modern course. We see the exposure there and it's about five meters thick landslide debris resting in fluvial gravels. So this hammocky morphology composed of small, haotic and closely spaced hills up 10 meters, 30, 40 in diameter, so much smaller and more frequent, more conical than for the glacier. And they're uniformly distributed and there's no lakes in between them. It's another good, very good indication in the valley. We see right angular boulders up to six meters in diameter, and they sit on top of these hill crests. So some of them are traveled on top of these rock launch material deposits. We call it carapace, and that's very common for landslides. Now let's move on to the Achiktash Glacier and Lenin rock launch deposits. Recent Lenin Glacier deposits within two kilometers of the glacier terminal, within two meters, two kilometers. More recent uh, Lenin Glacier. And this interesting deposit, which we identify as Lenin rock launch deposit, which fall down over the Achiktash glacial deposit. To the east of Lenin deposit complex of Tuyu Glacier hummocky terrain of similar morphology to Achiktash. And northward from the glacier deposit, the glacier Ahwash complex has been modified by the glacier fluvial streams. And they continue to wash away everything in the glacial and the hammock of the rock avalanche on the way to the Kizil Su River. In the open valley, Achiktash glacial deposit extends about 20 kilometers from the current Lenin glacier terminus. And there's a two main lobes which we found on the both sides of Achiktash River channel. It's covering about 65 square kilometers. In the hammock morphology, hills, as I say, 100 to 100 meters in diameter, up to 40 meters high, haotically interspersed with lakes. So there's the lakes you found, and the hammock's quite um, not as organized, I would say. So there's no alignment or preferred orientation of these hills. The frontal edges of the current deposit have been formed by erosion from continually shifting river channels. And you see these channels, they're cutting through hammocks and contribute to erosion. We find the erratic boulders on top of this deposit and they represent two main lithologies, conglomerates and marbles, both which found in the catchment of the glacier. And extreme weathering in the valley show this many boulders are split into the cobble size, gravel sides, debris, similar like on the common you can see the different lithologies. Lenin rock avalanche deposits rest on these glacial hammocks and it's of different lithology. It's more smaller and dense packed hillocks, as we say, only 3-5 meters in height and 30-40 in diameter. And in the open valley it spreads into three lobes, filling these fluvially eroded depressions previously by Kurumdu to the west, Kuzil Turuk at the center and Kuzil Turak between eastern Achiktash and western Tuyuk. Maximum extent of the deposits is 24 kilometers from the potential source and it's covering 32 and a half square kilometers in total. 
So this rock launch debris blocked the Korumdu and Kizil Turuk and Kuzul Turak reverse channels and caused the formation of a number of lakes. That's a um, suggestion how these numerous lakes are formed there. We can't find them everywhere right now, uh, mostly closer to the glacier. See these big lakes formed. And here. You can find them in the area. In some places, some lakes have been already dry out. And here's just somebody's farm. And another one. <laughs> so this big, the largest lakes, which dry up from time to time. That's what locals are suggesting. And between 13 kilometers and 17 from the source ridge, Rock Village deposit covers glacial hummocks. And numerous river that cut through Achiktash exposed this rock college material of a line the glacier deposit. Some of the rock college deposit has been modified by the post deposition of glacial activity. And we see less pronounced hillock morphology here between a section of Lenin base camp and unmodified part of the rock college deposit. It's exactly what I showed you this modified part of the deposit here. So it's been sitting here and then post river activity coming from the active glacier changed it. So it's resulted in pronounced, less pronounced hillock morphology and number of shallow lakes created here. East of the Lenin catchment, to you glacier deposit is preserved and it's covered 13 square kilometers and it's extending 13 kilometers from the source glacier. Now it's shrunk and separated into five little glaciers. And the majority of this western lobe of this glacier is covered by rock launch material. Here you can see much more straightforward different significance and even probably after rock launch deposit fall down, we have these streams develop that kind of flowing around the rock launch material, finding its way out. The deposit morphology resembles glacier deposits in the valley, coarse hammocks, highly weathered and partially reworked. So what about the sediment here? What else we can tell about this sediment? Based on lithology, we have absolute uniformity of the proposed rock launch deposits. It's very straightforward, you can tell it from this image. So it's mean that rock launch originated from concise, small area and a slope. Exactly like I explained, it's gonna work. So for common rock lunch, we have predominantly gray sedimentary mud, silt and sandstones with some diorites. And for glacial and fluvial deposits of common catchment, we have five different lithologies. And also the presence of diorite, volcanic uh, source rocks in the common, suggested one place back of the common glacier back wall. So we can pinpoint the source of it. Lenin Rock Avalanche deposit have marbles. It's mostly made of marbles with some conglomerates. And it's so contrast with polylithological Achiktash deposits. So in Achiktash, Lenin Glacier, in fluvial deposits, we have a whole variety of different lithologies. You can tell it straight away from just looking at the outcrop, but also doing the count. In the landslide uh, Rock Avalanche, it's mostly marbles. We also collected some samples for the finds, and as was expected, using scanning electron microscope, we looked on the very fine particles, up to nano size, and as expected, rock avalanche has common sui and linen. Rock avalanche has significant amount of very fine particles. We also calculated the proportions as well, and it supported the origin that these all finds come from the catastrophic collapse of the rock flange. This is the glacier material. We have uh, rocks risen in between and that's it. You don't see any finds, much finds in between, some flaky rocks maybe. And this is the rock flange material from the common cross section and rock uh, and particles itself. And you can see very, very fine uh, material glued together. This is all these finds, particles, which we cannot separate much without the chemical analysis. We call it agglomerates and the bigger grains, for example, clust size sitting here and it's surrounded by this part of finer, finer, finer particles, sub-micron size 
matrix. Here you can see a little bit better, this is the size, this is one micron size. And we also looked on the class shape here as well, versus its angularity, showing us in general where we can find which of the deposit. So that's when we learned from study the valleys, geomorphology and the deposits themselves. And we can talk about the relative what happened first, what later. We can already talked about it a little bit and how it's affected the valley in the next last video about these hummocks in the Ali Valley. Hope you enjoy my videos, subscribe, more videos are coming and please share it with anyone. I really appreciate it and all the best.